OK, we're continuing the build-up to this Sunday's All-Ireland Senior Hurling Championship Final. It is Limerick and it is Kilkenny. And I've, uh, I've been in Limerick yesterday, the last 24 hours or so, and we're continuing the build-up um, in Limerick. And it's delighted to be joined by a man who is no stranger to All-Ireland Finals or the big days, Eamon Cregan. Eamon, how are things? They're not so bad. I have a frog in my throat at the moment, but um, that's not from excitement for the match next Sunday. But um, no, we're just... Um, thanks be to God, we're living the life and uh, we're all above ground. Exactly. I, I remember reading there was a phrase from you in around, I think you were talking in around 2016 when your Mary I team had, had a bit of success and you had said that the gap between 73 and then was an absolute disgrace. Yeah. Uh, little did we know what, what was just around the corner in, in that there was a potential four in, the, four, in, four in a row on the cards now, but did you ever think it would, even in 2016, that it would get to this point? No, no. We always felt that um, we, we had plenty of good hurlers and... Um, when the academy started in 2007, um, it blossomed. And then uh, Joe McKenna with Jerry McManus got involved with, with Shane Fitzgibbon and his group. And we were hoping then that at some stage we might have Im might improve the standard of underage hurling. Not so much as go out and win everything in front of us, mm -hmm. but to be playing at a high level all the time. And this is where the um, Harty Cup sy system came into play. And then Fitzgibbon came into play, and um, a lot of the lads would have been through college and would have played in all of those things. But I never dreamed, in my wildest dreams, that we'd be here, and uh, we'd be in another final. It's it's crazy because I spoke to Joe Quaid earlier about the, I think they won an All Ireland under 16 title in 2012 yeah. with a few of those lads. And no, I, Joe. Yeah, it is a sore point to Joe. Um, Joe was would have been would have automatically gone up to minor, but in the under 16 was just born in Oak. Yes, and at that stage, the county board, under Joe McKenna, uh, well, not under Joe McKenna, with Joe McKenna's advice, um, picked Brian Ryan as um, the manager of the minor team. I had been asked, but I didn't want to because I didn't want any more responsibility. I preferred to be involved, mm. but not a manager, because you have to go up and tell young fellas, "I'm terribly sorry you didn't make the panel," and then bang, the the feeling of this, I won't say despair, but of anguish on their faces just mm. didn't. I couldn't. I couldn't take it anymore. There's so much that needs to be said about that lifting the Treaty Academy, and was it 2011? You lads set that up r around then. But, but well, the the academy itself started in 2007. Mm. The the new setup, um, which was involved the the Board and Og accepting recommendations from from Shane Fitzgibbon, that the whole setup needed to be changed, and um, uh, intercounty players were brought into the into the fold, and a lot of it would have been. Shane's idea, he thought about it, he spoke to us, spoke to a few of us, and then we, we came on board and we went out then and we had to canvas because the, the, the feeling out in, in the county at the time was we didn't, the idea was that we didn't go and try to win under 12, under 13, under 14. Mm. The whole idea was to improve, gradually improve and play to high standards. And uh, that, that was accepted by the county board in Oak. And themselves, ourselves, then we, we went forward from there, but we never thought it would happen yeah. the, never, the never. way it's happening. Yeah, it's unbelievable, the success, the level it's, it's reached. Um, do you find it hard to believe, I was chatting to someone during the week, 1973, 50 years on, we have a Limerick and Kenny final. I mean, you, what are your memories of that day? Because obviously people would have known you as a, as a, as a, maybe move, a player that was further up the pitch, but you were moved to centre-half back, I think, for that final to, to mark um, Pat Delaney. Who was, was a yeah. danger man for Kilkenny? Well, <clears throat> at the time, we, we had... Um, Jim O'Donnell would have been centre-back. And uh, Delaney was playing centre-forward. And I had been injured in the semi-final. Mm. And I didn't know what was wrong with me. And I had to go to, I had to, go to doctors. And at the time, a cartilage, a cartilage injury, nobody knew about it. Mm. They thought it was a bit of, bit of a thing moving around inside your leg. But in actual fact, I didn't know it until after the All-Ireland Final. So I was in treatment for three, three and a half weeks, four weeks, prior to the, the Munster Final. Couldn't train, or prior to the All-Ireland Final. Mm. And uh, was with St. John, John St. George, a physiotherapist outside in the regional, and he never told me what was wrong. And he was, he was always at my knee, and I was wondering, what the hell? But I asked him one day, I said, um, I said, will I be able to play? You will, he says, you will. So I went from there, and then the next night I went in training, I was approached by the two... Jackie, Jackie Power and Dick Stokes to know would I go to centre-back 
And my first thought, as I've said this often before, was for Jim O'Donnell because Jim had been the one that had been playing there. And um, they said, no, we'll, we'll talk to Jim and explain to him. So it wasn't a new move for me. Mm. I had played centre-back with my club. Most of the time, I played centre-back until the legs began to go and then they pushed me up into the forwards. And uh, then they pushed me into 15. I think they were telling me something that the <laughs> next step was over the end line, you know. But it, it, was a, it was a surprise because it came out of the blue. Mm. And um, I accepted I accept the role. And uh, well, and then, you see, my, my emphasis at that stage was on my knee and whether I'd be available to play. And I went, the match started and... Um, I went for I went for a ball. After ten minutes, I went for a ball. And next thing I heard a crack. I, I stumbled and I heard the crack. And I got up and I played on. And what he actually told me, John St. George actually told me, was the cartridge went in instead of coming out. It, it was out, and he hadn't been able to get. I'm not sure whether he, he was unable to get it in or not, but it slipped in. And it was five years before I got it done. Before I got my cartridge done, then to 1978, it happened in a match. And oh well, no, it didn't. It happened at home. I was chasing one of my sons around. He said something <laughs> to me, and it was a, I ran after him. And next thing, bang, the leg went. Jeez. So it was obviously a stressful build up to that final for you because you're when you're when you're thinking about an injury and how it's going to react. I guess that's stressful. But after, when the full time whistle goes, and then, and then the reaction of bringing Liam McCarthy back to Limerick, like oh. that must have been something special. It, it was. It was something special because I always believed that that we would win in All Ireland. We had come from. You see, we had come from playing hurling at, oh, we started, I started playing club hurling at about 10. And my brother Michael was with me all the time. And um, we then progressed into Sexton Street and we played Harty Cup. And we won the colleges, the Harty Cup colleges in 63, 64. And we won the all Ireland colleges that year. Now, we were beaten in the minor final the previous year. And I was captain and I, I was useless, absolutely useless. And... Um, the fact that we were playing the following year in the college's final, I had been there and I had no problems with playing in Croke Park and neither had the rest of the players. But, but um, that system was in place and Limerick CBS went on to win four Harty Cups mm. in succession, beating the final of, the, of the, the fifth. So a bulk of those players came on board. And then you had the likes of Richie Bennis who was, and Frankie Nolan who were in um, the technical school mm. and they had won in Ireland as well so it was coming along nicely and then suddenly they all came together and we had a team that was capable of winning because we went to five five league finals in that time mm. and um, we played I think we played eight monster finals on the, you know on the trot from 70 upwards not not so much since 70, 71 upwards and uh, we won we won four out, out of the eight which wasn't bad, but it, it gave us the experience required when we went in to play because we, I was 28, I think, when we played in the final in 73. Mm. And uh, Eamon Ray would have been 29. And the, the age was, gap was right. Experience was there, toughness was there, and the skills were there. And then we got in, Jackie Power and Dick Stokes became selectors, and they had won all Ireland medals with Limerick in 1940. So we had somebody to look up to as well. Mm. And there was no politics as such. They saw it, they did what they had to do, and nothing nothing mattered, only the Limerick team winning. It's amazing, isn't it? Cause I'm trying to do the maths here, you would have been 28 in, in 73, so I'm thinking about random games. There was, a, there was a game people still talk about, the 6th of the 6th, 66, mm -hmm. played a Munster quarter final. You must have been 21 then, if, the, if that, yeah, if that was, was... Yeah, 21, right. I was 21, so, yeah. People who, who <laughs> weren't alive or don't remember, Munster quarter final against a very, very fancy Tipperary team, yes, I think it has were. to be said, uh, and you end up winning the game. At, at the scoreline I have in front of me here is 4-12 to 2-9, and of that 4-12, you scored... If, I'm, if I've done this correctly, three goals and five points. I mean, That's correct, yeah. unbelievable. <laughs> it, 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 it sounds unbelievable. At the time, it didn't sound. We played a particular brand of hurling. Now, you've got to take into account that we're playing against a Tipperary team that had John Dyle, Mar Mick Maher, and Kieran Carey in the full back line. <laughs> and if you stood shoulder to shoulder with them, you hadn't a chance. Yeah. So our tactic under Brother Burke, Brother Burke had, who was trained our Harty Cups team, was involved as a selector as well. And we, we adopted a kind of a, a Sexton Street style of hurling, which meant we kept the ball going fast, we moved it diagonally, and we ran onto the ball, so we kept them moving, and we tried to run the Tipperary backs 
because if you didn't run the backs, you ran into stone balls, and you, you don't want that. And the balls came across beautifully from, from the wing, a diagonal ball coming across the wing. You run onto it and let fly, and fortunately, they went in. But it was, it was a great win for Limerick there, because, and then we, have, we adopted an attitude then that we were capable of beating Tipperary most times. You know, it was, it was a fantastic, you know, winning that or beating them that day, you know. They, beat us again. they beat, had beaten us in 69 in, in by two points, but we were close. We were always close to mm. Tip. And then it, they went, it went about a 17-year spell when t- Tip, any time we met them in Munster Championship, we beat them. You know. That rivalry uh, lives on even today, it has oh, yeah. to be said. Certainly it, is. It's, it's one of those... Um, I was chatting to Joe Quaid earlier, as I said, and, and he was. We were talking about '94, and of course the All Ireland uh, between Offaly and, and your own Limerick. Mm. Well, your, your own Offaly as well, in a, in a know, funny sense. And, and Joe was talking about that that last five minutes where I think Limerick are five points ahead, almost sewn up. But but in hurling, I guess nothing is ever sewn up. Was that was that a, how did, at the full time whistle of that one? How did you feel? Because I, I guess you're a you're a Limerick man managing an Offaly team to beat Limerick in a final, which is such a bizarre situation to be in. I guess. Yeah. Well, I don't know how I looked at it. First of all, when we, we walked onto the field, both Derry and myself, Derry O'Donovan and myself, walked onto the field, nobody booed us. Now, in a situation where a Limerick man is looking after another, another team and playing against Limerick, you can get a certain amount of, cro- of the crowd having a go. Mm. Nobody had a go to us. And that, that struck in my mind the whole time. And uh, when it happened, you see, it was a, a number of consequences. Uh, Limerick made a very bad move in taking... Um, Gerard Hegarty out of centre back mm. because not Gerard Ger Hegarty Gerard's yes. father out of centre back because he dominated the three three half the three positions he he went behind and when they went down the, the left wing he went and covered back there and he covered centre back and he covered right half back and he we couldn't get the ball past him mm. there was a switch made then with one of the players and Ger, Ger went to centre field and then suddenly the half back line opened up <laughs> and we we started playing. Offaly were a fine hurling side, you see. And, um, but the feeling I had was, mm, it was a bit of a downer in one sense that um, here I was hoping that Limerick would win in All-Ireland and having won one in 73 and then we had the famine which lasted 45 years. Now I don't know how anybody could survive 45 years but we, we did. And um, I'm there in charge of a, an Offaly team that wins, that beats Limerick in the final. Uh, it's a bit, a bit surreal is that the word they use yeah. surreal yeah. I yeah. think it's a good word to, to sum it up because they, I, Limerick as I was saying this during the week as well Limerick almost became the the male of, of hurling in some ways and that yeah. they kept getting to finals and they just couldn't That's right, from yeah. 73 to 18 get over the line so it, it's almost like the, 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 the plug has been open now and, and they're, they're flowing more, more regularly yeah but we're, we're lucky we, we came across we didn't come across them they were there and they were just brought together um the present senior team would have been all through the academy, except there are exceptions to all all rules mm. that you don't have to be in the academy to to become a very good player. It will help you improve, and that's what it has done for a lot. And then they brought in a magnificent backroom team. Like, imagine tw- having 25 fellows to, in your control. And we were lucky that John John Kiley was a principal of a, of a secondary school mm. and uh, had the administration administrative skills to bring them all together. Yeah. And it's just phenomenal. That's all I can say. It's it's unbelievable. It's, we're living in cloud cuckoo land, <laughs> you know. And long may it last, I guess, from a Limerick perspective. Uh, the, the, we, we talked about the, the 2012 under 16 win, but in 2016, your, your Mary I um, mm. first Fitzgibbon, I think, in in a long time. Certainly for Mary I was no, the first. Won one. It's the first ever. There you yeah, go. Yeah. And you look at the list of players that were on that team. I think you had David Reedy, you had Darrow Donovan, you had Richie English, like. Some of these lads, Lynch, of course, and, and Declan yes, Hannan as well. Lynch. Yeah, uh, I mean, that w- that must have been an, a moment where you, you felt there, this was a special group of players as well, because that's a huge moment, as you say. Sorry, the first the first Fitzgibbon Cup win for Mary I. Yeah, well, when you, you add in the Tipperary lads, mm. you had Seamus Kennedy, who's playing with Tip now. Yeah, you had Niall O'Mara playing with Tip now, and you had a blend of um, your Ronan Maher. Mm. He was playing, you know, but you we had a blend of exceptionally good players. And it, we didn't think that, that they were capable of winning the, the Fitzgibbon. And I'll give you an example of what we mean. We got to the final, having been beaten by UL in the, in the, pre- the round robin thing. Mm. And they'd beaten us by 12 points or something like that. And um, do you know how many nights we trained for? In the week? In a week, how yeah. Many. Um, 
I suppose three or four, you'd imagine. Yeah. One. Right. One. <laughs> one meeting. And the whole, it was the player's decision. They came in and they said, look, there's no point in coming in Tuesdays and Thursdays for the final and we only having 12 because they were out on they were out on teacher practice as well and they'd have mm. to come back from all over the country and it wasn't feasible to, to do that. So the lads decided, we'll come in one night and we'll be all there. Mm. We didn't know... We did no shooting practice. We did a set, an ordinary session, nice and easy. But what had stood to us is that a lot of the lads were into county players and they had trained. They'd gone home and trained with their clubs or they had trained with the county. Mm. So they were fit enough. <laughs> but then you had Keen Lynch and you had, you had Declan Hannan. Declan Hannan played corner forward, full forward in the semi-final. In, yeah, in the quarter-final running up and I was at it against UL. It was the day Sean, Sean Finn had his cruciate injury and Declan was inside full forward and I had handed over the, the ch in ch being in charge to um, one of the lads and I said, you're in charge today, I'll go down with Hurley's down to the back. And I was, I was there at in the left corner position as such and Limerick, were, we were playing five hand passes out of defence <laughs> and by the time the ball got down, Declan's back was, was red raw from, from the full back having all the time in the world yeah. to wait and know that the ball was coming in slowly. So we des I decided that I would, I would change the style and I'd say we'd have, I'd take Declan out of full forward, put him into right corner forward and then we'd use one pass and then clear the ball down the field. And the balls were coming in magnificently for him and he was our free taker as well. And Declan, you see, the thinking was the cornerbacks don't like movement. Mm. They don't like balls going, coming in diagonally. <laughs> they like a nice high ball coming in of control or a ball coming in low and they don't, have, they don't have to go too fast for the ball. But with Declan moving, that meant the back, corner back had to move. Yeah. He had to use his brain. And then it came in sideways and Declan was out in front. And he, did you ever see his, his ball skills? Yeah, unbelievable. He's unbelievable. <laughs> now, he went off injured after 55 minutes and he had a goal and 12 points scored. <laughs> and then we went into, he was, he was gone for the, the extra time. Just, I call, I call Owens, Jesse Owens, but um, he was refereeing, and then we went into, we were two points ahead, and next thing they got two frees, draw, extra time. We were ahead again, two frees, draw, extra, extra time, extra, extra time. Right. And um, with five minutes of extra, extra time, and um, one of the lads, one of the lads went down injured with a cramp, and I, I couldn't take him off. He wouldn't come off. Andy Ryan wouldn't come off, and, and I got an idea. I said, stay there, so... And the match progressed anyway. And within 30 seconds of me being out of this flood, I was walking to the sideline and um, a whistle blew. And I said, I looked at my watch and there was 47 seconds left. And uh, I said, the next thing I saw my daughter, Kira, who was the sports officer, Mary I, with her hands like that. I couldn't believe the match was over because there was, there was still 47 seconds, right. you know. But it, it started. And the team, the team, the beauty of that team was there were five subs that could come on and would not disimprove the team. Yeah. Would strength make it better. Yeah. yeah. And we had we had strength and depth in that team. And it was, it was a great... For Mary I, it was great. For Noreen Lynch, God rest her, who had kept curling and football going in Mary I for years on her own. For her, it was fantastic for her. Mm -hmm. But we were, we were happy. And then the following year, they went out again. <laughs> and they won it. Yeah. You know, so the momentum was there. And all the players had tasted high level. They were part of the minor team that were beaten in an All-Ireland final by uh, some of these Kilkenny fellas that are playing on Sunday. Mm. They would have been playing against us in, in the minor final that they beat us in and beat us well. So, you know, we have tremendous respect for Kilkenny. Not enough to be, be beaten by, but <laughs> tremendous respect. Well, we should finally touch on, on that match uh, as well, Eamon, uh, this weekend. I mean, so much at stake. I guess Limerick would love to be the, uh, a four-in-a-row four team. Uh, Kilkenny, of course, to, who did it in 06 to 09 would love to be the team to stop them. There's history no matter what way you look at it. Um, how do you see this one shaping up? We're kind of looking Declan Hannan, the man we mentioned, um, potentially not involved this Sunday. Reigns to be seen. But either way, there are a lot of decisions for John Kiley to make, a lot of decisions for Derek yeah, Ling to make. Yeah, but yeah. how do you see it playing out? Oh, it's a two horse race. Mm. And don't anybody tell you otherwise. And how there are four to 11 favourites is, is beyond me. Yeah. I, don't, I don't gamble or anything like that, but four to 11 is, is a ridiculous figure and uh, generally the book bookies s seem to get it right but there are times when they don't but um 
We're minus Declan, we're minus Sean. That means we've got to bring two players have to fill that position. And, you know, your, your, your leader is, is gone. And uh, a, f a fabulous player, the way he plays at centre-back is, is unreal. And it's the way Limerick are playing. They play, I know what kind of a game they play because I can't, I haven't, de I haven't been allowed to go to any of their, <laughs> their sessions. And it's total, everything is calm. They go through the routine. Um, they have Kinnerk, Paul Kinnerk there who seems to be a bit of a, uh, not a bit of a genius, a genius. Yeah. And he's, he's applying everything. And then he has a backroom staff, hurlers, the selectors there are very good and they're involved. They're all involved. But one of the things that I, it struck me is their composure under pressure. Mm -hmm. Now, they didn't, they're not playing well at the moment. And I was very impressed with Kilkenny the last day. And uh, Claire, you know, that it was... Uh, they shouldn't, Clare shouldn't have lost it. There were chances that they, mm -hmm. they could have got. But there's only a puff of a ball between all of the teams. Yeah. Like Galway the same way, Gilkenny, Limerick, Clare, Tipperary, mm -hmm. same thing. <laughs> and there are five there. And uh, you have to put in Gilkenny beside it. And Wex Wexford, unfortunately, didn't work out this year. But it's another one of these matches that I just don't know who's going to win. But my heart says Limerick. And my heart always over was my head at times, and I'm, I'd be going for Limerick, but it's going to be very, very close. And if we don't do, if we don't improve on what we have done so far, yeah. we're not going to be winning. Mm. So it's up to the players. And there's the, the call out from Eamon Cregan for the players if they're if they're listening or watching in advance of, of Sunday. The like. I, you'd said, uh, I think in 2016, that interview where you'd said it was an absolute disgrace, the gap between Limerick winning. You'd also said, I couldn't go to Turles anymore, I'd be playing the match. Well, is that, is that why you can't go? You, you'd be too yeah. invested? Mm. I, <clears throat> like, you take the situation where I brought, I brought Declan Hannan to right cornerback. Now, the other selectors didn't agree with it, but they, I got him round. I've played corner forward, and I know what kind of ball that I want. <laughs> and it has to be put on a plate for me. Because what advantage has a forward if he has to go 50-50 for a ball? Mm. You have the ball, you're placing the ball in high, and more than likely the back is going to win it. So it's the way it's played. And um, this is Limerick are playing. I'd love to be playing today. Mm -hmm. Like the ball is on the plate for... for no. And the pitches as well are pretty, pretty perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but they're getting fabulous ball in. And everybody is working for everybody else. And there's no one person dominating. They're all a team. And they've been a team for so long. They've known each other since under 14. I was at, a, at, a, at an under 14 final between Castle Troy and um, Old Skull. And there were eight or nine of that team playing in the final. Keane Lynch was playing, I remember. Barry Nash was playing, you know. And they've been playing against each other and know each other so well. Mm -hmm. They're like a family, you know. And this is, this is the thing. In our day, we had, we had oddballs all over the place mm -hmm. and trying to control them. I wouldn't have the, the knowledge on how to control these guys, but they're there. They have a job to do and they're focused. And you're talking about four in a row. They're not even thinking of four in a row. They're mm -hmm. thinking of an All-Ireland final. We want to win that. That's their next match. And they take one match at a time. And this is what they're doing. And I'm hoping that they'll be, they'll be just ahead at the end. Mm. Well, listen, they, they, I'm sure they'll, they'll enjoy the build-up. We'll all enjoy the build-up and we'll all enjoy the match as well. Well, maybe you mightn't enjoy the match. You'll be watching between your fingers probably on, on the TV. But yeah, I'll, be, I'll be watching a car. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> listening to it potentially. Uh, listen, Eamon, brilliant stuff. Uh, and uh, try and enjoy the match on Sunday. Best of luck to Limerick. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks,